Um, we are the Media Arts Action yeah. Project, uh, also called MAP, and we are really thrilled to show you our presentation. Uh, we have about 15 points to get through, over 25 slides, but we'll be quick. <laughs> Uh, I'd love to start by introducing my wonderful team that I've had the pleasure of working with over this uh, year-long process. Uh, we have Leo Kim, our team lead. Oh, wait, I'm Annika. <laughs> uh, I'm Annika, and this is Leo Kim. And we have um, Coco Lang, and Yvonne, and Shin. So uh, before we get into the presentation, it's important to define a few key terms that um, kind of give some context to the project. Um, so clearly, media arts is very important to our project, um, yet the term itself kind of fails to conform to a traditional definition. Um, but through our research, we've seen it um, broadly described as artistic practices that utilize electronic media technologies. And um, this includes a wide range of sub-disciplines that goes from you know, animation to VR. And um, you can see that many of these practices are relevant to arts and entertainment. However, um, we believe that there are um, wider uh, applications that um, will be, become even more important as we move into a digital first uh, economy. So as a digital medium, media arts is strongly tied to digital access and more importantly, the lack thereof. This gap in access to technology and broadband has come to be known as the digital divide. And um, our research shows that it is affecting all boroughs in New York City, but especially uh, Brooklyn and the Bronx. Um, which are especially populated by more Hispanic and BIPOC residents. With the recent COVID-19 pandemic, this gap has gotten even wider and greatly hindered students who were not able to transfer to digital spaces. They have lost years of educational and personal and professional development and sorely need an initiative to get them back on track. Um, with especially this last point um, in mind, we have identified the following problem statement we are working to address. Um, According to the New York City Department of Education, 71% uh, of public high school students are economically disadvantaged. And especially those who are residing in lower income NYC districts are statistically less likely to have access to digital technologies and skills building programs um, that can prepare them for university and beyond. Um, without access to those resources that build interpersonal and professional skill sets, it is becoming more, uh, less likely, sorry, um, that those students will graduate or feel confident enough to directly enter the workforce. To, de uh, to further demonstrate the urgency of this problem and support the need for a solution, we have compiled the following data points. Um, on the left, you can see that the NYC workforce skews extremely white across um, our chosen sectors, and even specifically in multimedia arts, that still holds true with approximately six or seven out of 10 being white. Um, Moreover, we've seen that K-12 skills building programs are concentrated in Manhattan, and to further support the need for more arts-based programming in high schools, uh, we've seen the benefit of the arts and school, par school participation, um, especially as it relates to truancy, dropout rates, and four-year degree earning. Yeah, so the target persona we developed was based on episodes from a podcast, This American Life, episode titled Three Miles that describes the challenges a young Hispanic woman from Bronx experienced as she went through high school and participated in a school exchange program with a wealthier white school three miles away. Her story is not unique, though. Many students from other resourced areas of the city are brilliant, creative, and high-achieving, yet they do not have opportunities to develop these skills and pursue careers of their choice simply because of the financial restraints. When we analyzed her educational journey more closely, we found there are many opportunities for our solution to address certain pain points during high school. As a formative time in our young lives, high school is a time where we should be able to explore the option and develop personally and professionally. At the foundation of our design solution is this principle to give students that opportunity to explore their options and develop into a well-rounded character. 
After analyzing Melania's educational journey, we were able to refine our research question. Digital technology has become an important part of many industries in the job fields. So we are exploring ways to provide broader media arts education and workforce development opportunities while mitigating the disparities created by the digital divide for students from under-resourced pub public high school in New York City. So we researched um, we researched that question through the 4D model. Um, in the summer and early fall of 2022, we began exploring NYC's media arts landscape, the public education and workforce development systems, and the impact that the COVID-19 pandemic had on those systems, especially as the migration to digital devices significantly impacted communities of color. From late fall, we moved into Define and connected media arts skills with the workforce development and digital access. We were also able to secure five interviews with media arts organizations, a commercial high school, and Pratt's uh, college preparatory program. We gained some key insights from those interviews that helped us move into design. During the design phase in early spring 2023, we moved through several iterations of our design prototype, but ultimately landed on a model that identified the core career programs and services that would enable high school students to gain digital competence, feel prepared for four-year college programs, and encourage them to participate in more novel forms of art that are popular today. Now we intend to deliver that prototype to community partners, including public library systems and media arts nonprofits, and finally, evaluate. We also aim to secure funding from private, tech, and state and local government and foundations. Our project is aligned with the following UN SDG goals. Quality education, decent work and economic growth, reduced inequalities, and sustainable cities and communities. So now it's important to iterate why we believe media arts is a solution to the problem we've identified. There are three primary reasons. Media arts practices have the ability to instill 21st century skill sets that are in high demand in today's economy. These practices also combine uh, artistic, scientific, and analytical skills into one discipline giving those who apply them the ability to navigate across creative and non-creative um, disciplines. Lastly, the media arts can be used to build digital readiness and literacy that is increasingly becoming more necessary in a rapidly digitizing world. Now Yvonne is going to go into some examples and case studies that inspired our solution. Media arts is a broad concept that involves a wide variety of careers and positions. As digitization increases, new careers and more cross-border integration will continue to emerge in the media arts. For example, there um, have been significant advances in the adoption of immersive technologies in areas such as healthcare, education, workforce training, and manufacturing, and one would expect that the greatest impact to be in healthcare. So here are the case study we did. Tooling library, which aims to provide free tools and the information to the local community starts helping people with various home and community projects that show us the success of public library system using equipment rental to serve the community. The second case, Forge Greensboro, has built a culture of creativity and inspire artistic practice by providing studio space, equipment, and training, as well as building up partnerships to promote careers um, in the local community in the fields of manufacturing and design. Both cases also emphasize the importance of community engagement, meaning they understand the needs and the interests of local residents, making it more likely that design solution will receive support and positive feedback. Now, let's move on to our value proposition canvas. Our value proposition canvas visualizes the correlations between our project and our target group lower income BIPOC and Hispanic high school students across New York City. We recognize that our target group is facing difficulties such as price and accessibility, cost barriers to technology, college preparation, and tuition. Our program delivers developmental opportunities that can expose students to a wide range of available options. The value we propose to provide our target group is accessibility to digital devices, internet service, and developmental programs, which help to provide safe, inclusive spaces to work on personal projects. Moreover, 
We would love to support our target group to break the cycle of poverty and help them to have the freedom to pursue the career of their choice. Operationally, we see ourselves as facilitators that com connect our community partners with public and private uh, funders. We also have following our goals such as strengthen uh, workforce pipeline from high school to employment, to introduce lower income students to media arts practice, to leverage public access to border and access to digital technology resources. We are currently established uh, a partnership with Brick. Brick Media Arts and Brooklyn Public Library to test our pilot. These goals are carried out through the design model that Xin will present next. Uh, so this is the photo uh, prototype model we uh, <laughs> which consists of two parts: programming and resource uh, service. We offer a variety of learning tracks to meet the diverse needs of our students, as well as certificates of opportunity that allow students to explore and develop the ability to rent media uh, media equipment. More importantly, our community, uh, community job boards and internship place may connect employers and the students, giving them hands-on experience and bring them into the workforce development pipeline. In addition, we work with public libraries and in computer labs, students have access to design and softwares and the internet. They can also rent media equipment, recording studios, and have technical and pro project mentors to guide them. Uh, in order to align with our first goal, uh, which is to strengthen the workforce pipeline from high school to employment, we measure both job boards and uh, internship practice in qualitative method. But for example, we are going to collect data from our external partnerships um, that the percentage of interaction, success, successful employment and placement to see if we achieve our first goal. To, uh, in order to align with our second goal, which is introduce lower income students to media art practice, we use both uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, approaches to measure student performance in our program. Last but not the least, we value our user satisf satisfaction during their experience through collecting quantitative data in terms of calculating the percentage of equipment rentals, um, the using land, and the uh, also, the service about their using experience. So, here are the financials for the map for fiscal years 2024, 2025, and 2026. Revenues are, revenues are com coming from government, foundations, and grants, corporate individual giving, and in-kind donations. And here are the projected expenses, which include space rental, internet usage, device purchase fee for the employees, marketing fees, program licensing fee, miscellaneous fees, and of course, the, the wages for the employees. So our marketing plan integrates digital and traditional marketing strategy to connect with students uh, uh, through more touch points uh, so that we can expand our impact and increase the enrollment. We will start by building a professional uh, website covering comprehensive media arts information. Students can also subscribe to emails for industry news. Uh, in addition, we are also focused on social media marketing such as TikTok and Instagram, where we will post short videos, challenge, as well as student work and backstories to build an active uh, online community. Uh, not only that, but we will also host community-based events to give students, parents, school educators, and alumni the opportunity to meet face-to-face, -face, adjust the concerns, and deepen the connections. Um, so finally, let's recap. Um, black and Hispanic high school students from low-income families in, the, uh, in New York City often lack access to digital technologies and skills building programs. And we already know that media arts are one of the best ways to bridge this digital device, develop 24 skills uh, sets, and increase student engagement in schools and the arts. We apply a workforce development model that equips students with digital literacy and creativity and joins the workforce where they can work across uh, multiple fields and eventually help lift the community out of the poverty. And we also have a short video, so hopefully it can give, it, give you all a, a picture of our program. Let's talk, Let's talk about media arts. It's a growing arts discipline that blends together art and technology. 
and some of the fastest growing jobs are projected to increase by 30% by 2030. Jobs like film and game production, 3D modeling and animation, encoding and design. And those skills can be applied in a wide range of industries outside of the arts too. But how many of those creative jobs are actually going to BIPOC and Hispanic students? Because less than 5% of multimedia artists are black, and only 14% are Hispanic Latino. So what are we going to do about it? We aim to build partnerships with local public libraries and media arts organizations in Brooklyn to expand programs and services targeted to high school students. Services like open computer labs and access to software, certification and online courses, project guidance, and leasing of media equipment. Because everyone deserves the chance to learn, to grow, to create. And you can help us make that happen.